You want to save $10,000 this year, but every time you've tried in the past, you've gotten bogged down with budgeting apps or spreadsheets and it's gone nowhere. Let's change that. I wanna help you reprogram your approach to saving money, making it something you actually look forward to, something that brings you joy and something that actually works to grow your savings account faster than you would have expected. Because saving your first or your next $10,000 could be the breakthrough that you need to launch yourself towards your financial independence goals. Plus, I have an advanced tactic, one that I actually stumbled upon. It was totally an accident, but that's gotten me multiple digits, five digit checks in the mail every year for the past four years. So stick around for that. We're not gonna use any special apps. I actually hate budgeting. I'm not very good at it. I always fall off that bandwagon, but we are gonna use a little bit of technology to be able to automate things and make it easier so that you can do the things that you really care about in this life. We're also not gonna cu cut any coupons or have any ramen only months. That stuff works, but it sucks. So we're not gonna talk about it. Okay, let's dive deeper into how to get that money into savings. First, you need a personal reason to save. You need a why. A strong why is necessary to do anything different and often that's something a little bit difficult, like saving $10,000. We're gonna look to Simon Sinek's work on why some people are more successful than others. He has a theory he calls the golden circle. Now, I want you to envision a bullseye, right? The outer layer of that bullseye is your what. The next one in is your how. And that center target, your bullseye, is your why. So the fault of most people is that they start with the what on the outside and they work their way in. But what he finds is that the most successful people who achieve big, unimaginable goals start with their why on the inside. So for you, my biggest tip to develop your why comes from Joshua Becker's work. Now he's in the minimalism space, but his work has also led him to discovering what is the true meaning of all of this stuff that we're doing, right? What matters most to you? I mean, you can imagine how a lifetime of pursuing decluttering your space and your mind and your schedule really leads to like, what is it that I want to do? What is my why? And he points to think about your values as a person. Do I value security, being able to pay my bills easily on time? Do I value time with other people? Do I value my own flexibility and freedom? These are some core values that if you can wrap your why of saving $10,000 into these values, it's gonna have a lot more meaning. You're gonna have more motivation, more focus, more directed actions are gonna come out of that why than if you were just kind of vague and said, I wanna save $10,000. Why do you wanna save $10,000? I wanna save $10,000 to propel myself towards financial freedom, or so that I can give more to the charities that I love, so that I have time to start this amazing side hustle business, so that I can take my kids on a cool vacation to Disney. Now, I created a free worksheet that I'll link to in the description below here. Just click on the link, you'll be taken right to the worksheet. That's gonna help you just write down these three things, your, how, your why, and from there, in the rest of this video, I'm gonna talk to you about how, and then you're gonna be able to really understand your what. I also included on the second page of this worksheet a really cool motivator that I'll get into in just a minute. But first, let's talk about present bias. Before we get into present bias, go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. It really helps me know what content is helping people. And feel free to comment below if you have any questions about the process or just want to share kind of a momentous step in your journey towards rate saving for $10,000. Present bias is the idea that today's actions are really not that inspiring. This is the idea that these small, tiny micro habit changes, and especially with mindset changes, because you're not taking physical action, or at least this was my bias going into this, is that that's not actually gonna make a big meaningful change. How could it? It's so meaningless along the way. Instead, we're gonna think about that $10,000. Every time I take an action, especially those times when I'm actually putting money into a jar or moving money from one account to another, I'm gonna think about $10,000. That's the number that I wanna plaster in my head. Or better yet, think about $8 million. Now, if you download that free worksheet down below, you're gonna see why I use the number 8 million, because if you were to just save $10,000 a year and invest it in passive real estate, the, my favorite kind of investing, I talk all about it, I'll link to a video about it. If you were to do that for just 10 years, $10,000 a year for 10 years, you'd end up with $8 million. 
in your lifetime. That's incredible power. So if you can motivate your actions today, if you can get rid of present bias today, you're more likely to continue the efforts to be able to save the money that you need to get to $10,000. Let's get into the actual actions you need to take to make $10,000 happen. First, in order to take action, we need to acknowledge that self-control is a limited resource in our lives. And research has shown this in studies countless times. Specifically, social psychologist Roy Baumeister calls this concept ego depletion. It's basically saying that there's a limited reserve of mental energy for all of the actions we need self-control for or willpower for, and that this often goes down throughout the course of a day. So there's a long day of making decisions and you get exhausted by the end of it and so you grab takeout instead, for example. So what we wanna do is understand where we have self-control, where that resource is in abundance, and use it to make some financial planning decisions. Okay, we're gonna leverage this idea to save money in two different ways. First, we need to make savings decisions less frequent and just easier overall. This is done by setting up automatic transfers. This is one of the superpowers that anyone is gonna tell you about saving money, but I'm gonna give you a specific number here that you need to do. So what I want you to do is go to your employer and ideally they're just depositing money right into your checking account, right? Instead of depositing 100% of that paycheck in, take $210, if you're being paid bi-monthly, $210 and put it into a high yield savings account that is outside of your normal Normal bank where you have checkings and savings and all of that outside different bank different institution different app on your phone I like to use Ally not an affiliate not linked to here but they have this great bucket system I'm sure many others do as well that I can actually put different money into different buckets without it being a separate account here but the benefit here is that this is on a different app like I said I don't even see that two hundred and ten dollars every pay period going over into that account now if you do this over the course of the year Bam, $5,000. We're halfway there to saving $10,000. And I'm serious, you're actually gonna forget about this. You're gonna adjust to it fairly quickly. There may be one or two months where it's kind of weird and maybe you notice it, but it's still sitting over there, right? You can still access it. It's not, it's still liquid. It's a liquid fund that you can invest if you really, really need to, but chances are you're gonna forget about it and that's where the magic comes in. The second way we're gonna hack our self-control is really what we're doing is to think about food on Sunday. Food on Sunday, food on Sunday. Put that in your mind. Sunday is the day for thinking about your food for the week. Now what this really looks like is kind of sitting down and thinking about the evenings where you're less likely to have an abundance of self-control or willpower and maybe more likely to go out to eat. I'm not saying you have to stop going out to eat altogether, but really take a look at this major fixed cost. So other than housing, food is a huge cost. And if we can move that needle even just a little bit and put some of that into savings, we're gonna make a big impact. Think about what's in your fridge. What can you go shopping for? What meals can you have on hand in order to say, oh, I'm so exhausted, but I have this other thing planned. It's easy, I don't have to go out to eat. For me, this looks like having a list on my freezer or on my refrigerator of the meals that are located in my freezer. This might be leftovers that I've frozen. It might be whole meals that I can just plop into my Instapot and make really quickly so that at the end of a workday when my kids really need to play with me and maybe I don't wanna put on Bluey, I have a really easy dinner to go to instead of having to go out to eat and having them order a macaroni and cheese that they're not even gonna eat and then they're just gonna get hungry when they get home every time, every time. The best parts of this is that you're actually training yourself not to be a last minute person here. This is another one of these like major mindset shifts that are gonna help you save money and be kind of like this financial savvy person that you really know that you can be. If you're not a last minute person, you're making better decisions, not last minute decisions based on like your emotions or your needs in that very moment. If you can throw just 30 or 50 bucks over into your savings account every time that you make a decision not to go out to eat, you're gonna find that it can make a really big difference. Two meals out at $30 each, it's gonna make you $3,000 over the course of the year. We're almost at $10,000 right there with these two things. Now, let's play with your dopamine levels. 
So dopamine is what gives us that kick of excitement, especially when we're spending money or so we think. This has actually been found to not be true. Roy Baumeister, our friend from Ego Depletion, has also studied when we get that kick of dopamine in relation to spending money. Research has shown that positive feelings from spending money actually don't last very long. You're probably not surprised. We actually get more dopamine from anticipating a purchase rather than actually making it. Now, just knowing that, we can hack our spending habits and our happiness levels all at the same time. Let me tell you how. We're going to make a list. I know, super sexy, right? Lists. Think about all those scrolling-induced purchases you make. Well, first of all, they're probably hitting us, those big corporations and all of their marketing dollars to be able to tap into our emotions, hitting us at a point in the day that is pretty low on the self-control spectrum, first of all. Second, they're trying to get us to make a purchase right then and there because they know that if we stop and take the time to think about it, we're much less likely to realize we actually need that product and we're less emotionally invested in it and owning it and feeling like we own it than we would have been if we had just clicked buy now. So we're gonna manage our emotional bank by doing this. Before you buy anything else, create a list. I have one on my phone. You can just have a notebook, whatever you wanna do. And there can be multiple lists, things that I need, right? Like I really do need to buy these things soon-ish, right? Maybe you want things for an upcoming vacation or things that you wanna buy when you're like rolling in the money, right? Put, put things on this list and don't look at it for at least two days before any purchase. You're gonna actually get the dopamine flowing without spending any money because you're gonna have dopamine from just anticipating that purchase for at least two days. You're also gonna be at a place where you can potentially make that decision a little bit wiser. You're gonna have more willpower, more self-control to decide if you actually need that. When you're not a last minute person, you can create habits that prevent emotionally driven purchases. Okay, let's keep building our emotional bank to save more money and be happier. We're gonna save more money by using research that's found that by investing in experiences as opposed to things actually leads to greater long-term happiness or long-term satisfaction. Scientist Daniel Kahneman discovered this on his work while he was researching when we actually are happy or how we get happy. He found that we can be happy now, sort of present moment happiness, and we can be happy by remembering previous experiences. He calls this remembered happiness. The good news for your big goal of saving $10,000 is that this can actually save money. So we're gonna hack this piece of information to be able to put more money in that high yield savings account of yours. So for your next purchase this week, even today, Think about if you could substitute an experience instead of spending that money. For instance, if you wanna go grab a coffee with a friend, would that friend be willing to just go for a walk with you instead? You're more likely to remember it, create those lasting memories. So you're not only saving a little bit of money, but you're also creating more lasting happiness. Now the trick is to move that $5, that $10 into your high yield savings account when you're done with that to kind of congratulate yourself. Again, think about $8 million, not $7, right? To be able to actually put the money in the account. So because I actually hate these kinds of things that I need to do to be able to put money into my account every time I think about saving money or didn't make a money decision, right? That doesn't work for me. But what does work for me is that I have a calendar invite or a calendar event on my uh, on my Google Calendar. And at the end of the month, I look at that and say, is there like an abundance of money in this checking account right before I get my first paycheck for the next month? And I'm gonna deposit some of that, ideally like another 200 bucks, another 300 bucks into that high yield savings account. This is gonna kind of be like the sweep approach of all of these little money decisions that I've made along the way if I haven't had time to say, oh yeah, I did not order takeout that night. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my money over, right? This is a great way to kind of like catch all and move it all in. Okay, it's time for that advanced tip I mentioned at the beginning. This has actually gotten me checks of multiple thousands of dollars every year and it's called a tax refund. Now I know that's not new news to you, but what you can do is work with your CPA. Maybe you're at the point where you can actually go in and talk to someone about modifying your withholdings to be able to get a refund, to be able to optimize a side business that you have in order to get a refund, to find different 
tax credits that are gonna put money back into your account. And then when you get that refund check, I have trained myself to invest it immediately or put it right into my high yield savings account. This is kind of like a hack that can juice up your savings every year that most people sort of don't think of in that context. They think of tax refunds as like, oh, a bonus, I'm gonna go splurge and do this, but really be committed to that goal. Use your why here to get excited to put that money in your savings account. But saving $10,000 isn't the only thing that's holding you back from your big financial goals, like reaching financial independence, retiring early, or just taking the kids to Disney. In fact, you won't make any progress towards those long-term goals if you don't start investing that $10,000. That's why I give you three ways you can invest $10,000 in this next video, even in real estate without having to be a landlord as a non-accredited investor. So watch that so you can give that $10,000 that you're putting in savings a ton more power towards your long-term goals. Don't forget to grab that free worksheet down below to be able to track your efforts and put that awesome chart on your wall of how you're gonna be a millionaire one day. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in that next video.